Hello world, I'm Maya Sundermeyer and I would like to welcome you to the latest episode of my blog series. So far I've shared my experiences with you of what it's like for me to live with autism. Other times I like to give my two cents as to what's going on with autism in the media. And finally I will cover topics that I am passionate about whenever I feel like it. In the meantime though, I would like to share my experiences of what it's like for me to live with autism. And I'm doing a series of blogs on um, autism and love and dating and some of the issues that come with it. And I wanted to mention to you guys that I have never had a chance to have a special someone on my arms. And I'll share where I am now where versus where I was about a decade ago. And I remember thinking it was such a big deal for me to have a that special someone on my arms and I remember I worked at an amusement park and just about everybody there had a guy on their arms and I remember feeling very lonely and very left out and um, I had wanted to go out with that guy who I had developed a self-fulfilling prophecy but I knew that was bad because he wasn't interested in me and B he was already um, trying to win the heart of a girl who we had been dating off and on with um, for a couple years and I remember working at this amusement park and I had uh, seen other coworkers. They wanted to set me up with a blind date and um, I'd been on blind dates before and I'd kissed a blind date and um, I didn't like the way their lips felt. <laughs> but I found out that they were trying to set me up with another individual on the autism spectrum and he was cute and everything, but I didn't want to be with somebody just because they were autistic. I wanted to be together with a normal person that looked at me as a whole, not as uh, someone um, who had the same deficits as I did. And I also uh, had that happen in several other occasions where people had, uh, had hinted that I needed to be with people of my own kind. And I just, it made me feel very degraded and it made me feel like I was a joke and that I couldn't have the same privileges that a neurotypical could have and it, it hurt me greatly. And um, I wanted to say too, uh, let's say we have a, a black American who uh, wants to go out with a Caucasian girl or an Asian girl, whatever. And let's say that he's lonely, has trouble finding a girl and there are other people that are um, Caucasian and they try to set him up with another African-American girl because uh, she shares the same um, genetics that he does and I want to mention how fair is that I mean an African-American guy has a right to choose a you know a girl of any race that he wants what's wrong with that and I'm thinking uh, if it's okay for him to have a white girl it's okay for someone like me to have a neurotypical as a boyfriend who's gonna look at me as a whole and not look at me like uh, like I'm an autistic or like a disabled person. So, but I'm, I'm gonna close too, I'm gonna close with a story. Now, the last time somebody tried to do that to me was about four years ago. I was, um, I was at the very end of going to a church and I had been riding back and forth with this family and they had a daughter with ADHD and she was dating this handsome guy in college and he was a mo he was an art model and he was just very good looking and I mentioned how nice it would be to have a boyfriend and they uh, th they told me to uh, go out with another guy or they they suggested that I go out with another guy from the congregation that had other human detouring systems but a I wasn't very attracted to him and B we never had a chance to get to know each other but I did know that we went to Georgia State and they brought it up and her well, and the, the father that was driving me home said, See, you have something in common with him already. And it just, again, it made me feel like I was devalued as a person and that uh, I wasn't good enough for uh, regular people in our society because uh, I was uh, below a certain glass ceiling. So, anyway, I am out of time for now. If you have any questions or comments, um, please be sure to post below. Uh, please also be sure to share with um, your adult support groups and teenage support groups and your advocacy groups, whatever. Um, you can also subscribe and share and retweet on YouTube. So until next time, I'm Maya Sundermeyer and I'm signing out now.